This looks like the angriest Disney movie I've ever watched. So let's uh, let's fucking roll. Let's go ahead and roll. Do you want to be Trixie. the main character? Sure, I'll be Trixie. Okay. My name is Trixie Glimmer Smith. The text faded too fast. I'm a first year student studying regional history and cultural studies here at Bluebell University. Events in the past week have led to me falling behind in my coursework. Hmm. This is my extenuating circumstances statement of case. I hope it is sufficient to explain why I need more time to finish my coursework. Thanks in advance for reading. Thanks. It all started last week. The double thanks gets me. Do we, um, I wonder if this, is this the, go ahead. At about 10 in the morning, I dragged myself out of bed and gotten dressed. Right, it's two weeks till my coursework deadline. Time to start this report on... Blue Hill County Cultural Exports 1800 to 1900. Oh, she Yay. has Pac-Man eyes. <clears throat> she does. Oh, I, they're very cute. What's the what's the poster to the top left? Cyber. Cyber Drac Cool Yaz. Nice. 5 a.m. on Mars. That's awesome. I sat and, and my other favorite poster. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I sat and stared at the brief for about 10 minutes. OK, no more slacking. It's time to get to work. I noticed I just clicked onto a two hour video essay about memes on video.com. Boy, do I know that feeling <laughs> when I accidentally click on a two hour video and am forced to watch the entire thing. Okay, but this is inaccurate because only two hours. Okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> More like 54 hour speed run. <laughs> Before I had any more time to be distracted, there was a loud knock at my door. That's some good Foley work right there. It wasn't. I jumped, knocking my cereal over. No! Milk nice. and chocolate covered sugar flakes spilled across my generic student accommodation carpet. No. Someone outside yelled. Okay. Trixie Glimmer Smith, open up. We have something to discuss. You, I, I was hoping that someone outside yelled was just going to be, ah, ah. <laughs> I recognized the voice. It was Nikita, my course's top student. We didn't talk often because she's kind of horrible. I slammed the space bar and quickly opened up a website about sheep. It wasn't really relevant to my work, but I hoped it might look educational enough to make Nikita judge me slightly less. Nikita <laughs> scared the crap out of me and I didn't want to keep her waiting, so I ignored the puddle of chocolate milk seeping into my carpet and opened the door. <laughs> Nikita <laughs> immediately marched straight into my room without asking, and I ended up backed into my desk. I'm glad I judged the personality here correctly. Right, Trixie, you have to do me a favor. Her eyes briefly glanced at the cereal Is puddle. A puddle of cereal? Do you, <laughs> do you need to clean that? Listen, listen, I know I'm angry here, but I can wait. <laughs> but quickly locked back onto me like the lasers of a sniper rifle trained on my skull. Yeah, the joke's on you. Nikita's a missile, not a sniper rifle. Yeah. Boom! Mixed metaphors. <clears throat> I instinctively sat back down in my chair and looked up at Nikita. I probably looked pretty subby. It would almost be kind of hot if I wasn't a fucking loser. <laughs> Big mood. <laughs> oh, she didn't even get to... Hi, Trixie. Uh, uh, sorry, look, hi, Nikita. Trixie. If I hadn't bailed you out last term by doing your coursework for you, you'd be fucking dead, right? I mean, I'd not go that- You'd be living in a bush and eating dirt because you don't want to go home to your family and admit you fucked up your education by sleeping through an entire term. I mean, that's a little harsh. I'd also been playing video games, writing raunchy fanfiction, and growing breasts. Nice. It would be nice to get some recognition for that for once. I know it was, but listen, my point is you owe me big time for literally saving your life. Literally. You didn't literally save my life. What the fuck? Whatever. 
Look, I just want you to find me a play script. It's easy. Oh, is that all? I I mean, sure, <laughs> I can I can do that. I guess you did help me a lot, right? Sorry, it's just you were being really aggressive, so I assumed you were going to make me kill someone or something. Tabby, maybe. You hate her. <laughs> <laughs> considers it. Considers, considers it. it for a moment. Miss Knight is a try-hard bitch, wasting everyone's time by running against me for student president, but I don't need her dead. I need her alive. I need her to keep I need to keep her around to make me look good. <laughs> As soon as she stops fulfilling that purpose, then she can die. That's fine. Tabby keeps Psyker crystals in her bra to prevent lunar interference, which I'm pretty sure isn't even a word. That's a pretty low standard to make you look good. I felt pretty bad saying Aww. that. Tabby was really nice, even if she was a little quirky and didn't really notice me. That said, Interference definitely isn't a word. <laughs> I mean, it could be if you try hard. I'm not very likable, so I need all the help I can get. Anyway, shut up. Your laptop is playing a video called Sheep Falling Over Conversation 6, <laughs> while your coursework paper is titled, and I quote, Star <laughs> Starred Soon. So are you going to help me, or am I just going to have to never bail you out of one of your fuck-ups again? I glanced at my laptop. EpicSheepFalls.com <laughs> wasn't as educational as I thought. It worries me because in this setting, we don't know whether or not they're anthropomorphized sheep. <laughs> it's just, it is just other furries. <laughs> Fine, what do you want exactly? More specific than just a play script. Last night, I was walking back from the library when I noticed some paper fluttering about. I don't usually make a point of picking stuff up up off the floor, but something drew me to it. I picked it up and realized it contained writing. I realized it right there in the courtyard. When I finished reading, I stood in silence for some time. I'd read an excerpt from The King in Yellow. Uh oh. Oh, really? We're doing this? Uh oh. We're doing this? Okay. I. All right. I guess we're. All right. We're really going in for this. Okay. My body is ready. I don't know how it got there, but I'm certain if that page was there, then the rest must be nearby. A surviving copy of the infamous Cursed Play. Do you realize how important that is? I'd heard rumors of the King in Yellow and of the ghastly writings within, and the rest of the stories that go with it that, that aren't are... anywhere near as scary. Yeah, really. I mean, <laughs> that's the funny thing about the King in Yellow is that like one or two bits are like, oh god, that's creepy, and the rest are just fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can find my copy here, but... I could have sworn it was on that shelf all the way to the r right? Yo, yep, yeah, there it is. Yep, I found it. Yay, Keep my reading. visual memory for the win. But I've already read this line. Oh, no! I very much doubted Nikita had found a page lying around at university. Copies were meant to be impossible to get a hold of. Supposedly all lost, hidden or at your local bookstore long ago. <laughs> Thank you, Robert Chambers, for writing a wonderful collection that is remembered for exactly one thing. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, wow. I always assumed that play was kind of a myth. Are you sure it was legit? Maybe you just found part of someone's fan fiction. Nikita, oh, that's your... Well, what am I doing? Sorry, I'm so used to taking over narration. This is... Nikita slammed her fist onto my desk with a bang. Bang. I know it is real. Sorry. It's okay. You're probably right. Only a real loser would write fan fiction about the king in yellow. Cyber and HP Lovecraft. Hides, <laughs> hastily hides fan fiction drawer. Oh, I thought we were doing a sideburn HP Lovecraft here. <laughs> The completed play would be of immeasurable importance to my studies. I could write my entire thesis analyzing how it has affected folklore both locally and worldwide. I need the full copy. Now, after the initial shock of finding it set in, I started sneezing. I concluded there must be some kind of allergen on the paper. 
I happen to be allergic to exactly one thing in the world. Not being a bitch? Boom! I was gonna get angry for <laughs> uh, you, but that was actually a pretty good burn. I Shut the fuck up! I'm allergic to daffodils. Daffodil Lane is a few miles from here. I happen to know the lane has a lot of daffodils, hence the shitty name. Given their relative rarity elsewhere in the country, I believe the page may have originated there. I'd rather avoid going there myself. I'm too important to get mildly uncomfortable. <laughs> Besides, I'm busy brainstorming slogans for my student union presidency campaign. Right now I'm thinking, knowledge through unity, unity through Nikita. <laughs> oh, jeez. Whatever. As a thank you for me saving your life, you're kindly going to Daffodil Lane and finding the rest of that play for me. Good? Thanks. I still wasn't convinced there would be anything to find, but I kind of wanted Nikita to leave my room. Before she noticed, I'd left some of my underwear on the floor. I mean, I hadn't agreed yet, but fine, I'll go. I, li I like... I like Trixie already. <laughs> like, she seems like an absolute loser, and I, I can... I can relate. Me too. <laughs> Just stop being so rude to me. It's not a good work relationship. Fantastic. Thank you for being so accommodating. Trixie. I'll let you get on with it. I have some books to read. Nikita brushed some dust off of her shirt and left without a goodbye. Nice foley. Thank you. According to my laptop, it was still pretty early. I guess I should get going. I may as well get this over with so Nikita stops bothering me. <clears throat> I found some snacks. I knew I would need them on my quest, errand, whatever this crap was. Mmm, a 20-pack of cheese ropes. <laughs> I fucking love artificial flavorings. Yeah, big mood. <laughs> I found my phone under an old shirt. Not that it came in much use. It can basically only take calls and receive messages after years of wear and tear. So we can't use to, uh... I like how we're uh, already establishing why we can't use our phone as a flashlight. Yeah. My phone's light flickers unless you constantly shake it like a maraca, so I brought along a torch as well. And also why we can't make outgoing calls. Yeah. Thank you for establishing that very early on. <laughs> Horror game. The torch seemed like one of those things that's good to have when you're looking for things. In retrospect, I should have made sure it had batteries in it before I left. Nice. I crammed everything into my bat bag. Nice. A lot of people accuse me of having a bat fetish because of all my bat products, but it's not true. I just like that bat part cartoon Cyber Draculias from space from a few years ago. There's no official merchandise for it, and those bats were really cute. Oh, it's Dracula. That's what it is. But it's Cyber Dracula. Dracula. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. I, I, I couldn't, or when we were looking at the poster, I couldn't put together what those syllables were meant to be. Anyway. I got distracted by my laptop for a while. Well, like three hours, but I got a lot of work done. Kinda. Oh! The two hour trek through the countryside during the worst heat wave in a century took its toll on me. I'd never been good with summer, I usually just hide inside, so I'd underestimated how hard it would be out in the sun. It was also about here, I realized I never cleaned up the cereal on my floor. Nice. I did eventually reach Daffodil Lane. I took a little rest in some shade and got my bearings. Oh, <gasps> her bat pack. Nice. Look at that. That's so cute. <sighs> I hope the weather gets worse soon. I could use some rain to cool me off. Nice. I took a look down the lane from my vantage point. Four quaint little cottages dotted the dirt road, and at the far end was the tree line of Blue Hill Woods. I'd been in the woods once before as part of my course. They were old and filled with interesting landmarks. I considered taking a walk in them once I sorted out the play stuff. It was probably cooler under the trees. Hi, hi, hi! Ah! <laughs> a small, rather eccentric-looking rabbit had appeared behind me while I was distracted. Before I could say anything, he held out a weird yellow string. Since we're such great friends, I made you a friendship string. The friendship string was about six inches of tattered yarn, 
seemingly dipped in yellow acrylic paint and sprinkled with what appeared to be sugar. It was faintly disturbing on a level I can't communicate, even after everything else that transpired in the following days. I added sugar so you can taste it if you get hungry. <laughs> I hope you like it, best friend. He seemed proud of himself. <clears throat> Keep it, obviously. What if we get hungry? Confused, I took the stray out of the rabbit's paw and held it up for a closer look. Nope. Oh, <clears throat> you right? <clears throat> It's just it, string. <laughs> it looked just as bad up close. I tucked the string away into my bag and also had trouble recognizing the lowercase t glyph from the lowercase f glyph. Okay, fine. I... Uh, thanks? So who... Hi! I'm Parsnip and that's my cottage. He jabbed a paw at the nearest right cottage. There. The one with right a well-kept daffodil patch in front of it. That one right there. You see it? That one right there. A small sign with my cottage written on it stood on the path next to it, clearly marking the cottage as someone's cottage. Um, you mean someone's cottage. <laughs> oh, hi, Parsnip. My name's Trixie. I'm looking for a book that might be around here. Have you heard of The King in Yellow? Wow, I love yellow. Oh, wow, it's my favorite color. Oh, okay. Well... It's good that you like yellow. The book, though, do you know it? I don't read books. They're so boring. I'm Parsnip and I'm a fun bun. <laughs> Want to come play with me? Uh, let's attempt to distract. You want to try to distract this fun bun? Yeah. You think this fun bun can be distracted? Yes, okay. easily. This was getting too weird. I want it out. Wow, look at that. I pointed into the distance. Parsnip just stared at me. I'd much rather look at you, new friend. Oh, okay. Well, I can't come play with you right now, cause like, I have to find the book for my friend. Remember? Also, my eyes are Pac-Man. Wow, mine too. Wow, mine are Pac-Man too. That sounds really exciting. You're like a detective. Oh, I mean, it's more an indebted servitude thing. Like, I... wow, cool. That's so amazing. Um, I am with Trixie on this one. <laughs> just like, you clearly do not pick up the mood I am putting down here. Before I could begin to formulate a response to Parsnip, the sound of a cuckoo clock blared from inside his cottage. It was loud, even from a good 50 foot away. Uh-oh, it's time for trumpet practice! I'll talk to you later, new friend! Now that I can find you at any time because you kept my string! <laughs> I made it for you. Just for you. I made it. <laughs> he merrily skipped off made to his it. cottage. Oh no. <laughs> Okay, bye. I crossed Parsnip off my list of potential owners of a forbidden play for some reason. Oh my god. He didn't seem like anyone who would own anything that required reading. I guess we have no reason to suspect that we're the protagonists of a horror game and this probably has <laughs> some kind of cosmological <laughs> horror powers, right? 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 Right. I started to walk down the lane, past the out-of-tune trumpeting blasting from Parsnip's cottage. I'm not convinced he even had the trumpet the right way around. <coughs> Impressive trumpeting. Thank you. I figured I'd try the next cottage. It didn't look as well kept as Parsnip's, but I could see some art easels set up in the garden, which piqued my interest. An arty person might have a copy of an evil play just to make a statement. Hey, cool, an artist. I can relate to them. I drew a picture once. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> I'm something of an artist myself. <laughs> <laughs> I approached the cottage and caught sight of a rabbit lounging in a deck chair, smoking and drinking wine. Classy. She was tall, stylish, and pretty. I was pretty hyped to meet what I assumed must be a famous artist. Either she didn't see me or chose to ignore me. I noticed her cigarette wasn't even lit. Hey, um, hi? I waved nervously. Uh. 
I wasn't used to talking to professional artists who were probably rich. Probably making, probably making mad bang off those commission. <laughs> <sighs> she tilted her sunglasses down slightly to look at me before pushing them back up. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um. I trailed off. My head felt light from the heat. I swayed side to side, starting to regret not bringing a drink. Sorry, I don't have any water with me, so I'm a little out of it. Anyway, like, I just walked down from university. Wait, you walked all the way here from the university? Without any water? In this heat? In this economy? <laughs> I remember letting out a quiet yes and collapsing, but not much else until I woke up a few minutes later. The rabbit's face was looking down at me from her deck chair. She looked mildly concerned, but apparently not enough to move me from being face down in the dirt. You fainted. Uh, are you okay? Buster Wolf. <gasps> no, you're, a bu <laughs> you're clearly a bunny. <laughs> I think so. It'd be Bunny Wolf. <laughs> Could I maybe have some water? No. <laughs> <laughs> I brought some out for you already. She motioned towards a glass of wine on the ground beside me. That's wine. The rabbit went wide-eyed under her glasses. Oh, so it is. How did that get there? She picked up the wine and shuffled shamefully into her cottage, returning a few moments later with some tap water. Thanks. I downed the water and felt a little better. It was pretty stupid of me to not bring any with me. Yeah. I realized I hadn't introduced myself and thought I better do it before it became too awkward. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I didn't do a great job of it. I'm Trixie. Le Rose. There was a frosty silence. So, um, sorry to bother you. It's just I'm doing someone a favor. They think there's a copy of some old playbook around here, The King in Yellow. I can't say I've heard of it. Are you sure your friend didn't say Daffodil Library? You know the one in town? I briefly worried she had. No, I'm pretty certain she said Daffodil Lane. I don't know where Wait, it could be, though. We hadn't even mentioned something like Daffodil Lane to... La Rose to begin with. I don't know, but we also... It's implied that... We oh, explained yeah. it in just an aside. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So we don't know what exactly we said. I asked, uh, Parsnip? Next door. Next door? LaRose seems to grimace at the mention of Parsnip. You spoke to... Parsnip? Are you sure? You look like you still have the will to live. I didn't, but that was unrelated. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, a bit. Is he that bad? I mean, he's a little excitable for sure, but... <sighs> LaRose's blood pressure looked like it was rising in rapidly. In case of the vapor. Let's ask. We don't want to get back on topic here? No, let's ask. What's the issue with Parsnip? He, he isn't like that all the time, right? He moved in like a <clears throat> month ago, and there hasn't been a day since that I haven't considered torching his cottage. She downed half a wine bottle in about five seconds. I was impressed. <sighs> he seems to know the exact best way to piss me off in any given situation. Also, are we hoarding the cigarette backwards with the burnt end towards our lips? <laughs> And I mean, he broke into my house a few weeks back while I was in the shower. And all he did was steal some candles. But jeez. 
He's a real weirdo. I don't believe in police, though, so if he tries that shit again, I'll just get my old cricket bag out and launch him into the woods like a ball. <laughs> Is that the cricket bat in her painting? I believe so. She finished her wine and reached for another bottle. Oh my god. I I, <laughs> I wasn't on board with LaRose, but you know, now that she said ACAB, I think I'm I think I'm back on board. So yeah, I fucking hate parsnip. The burglary definitely put a bit of a damper on my opinion of parsnip. Still, I hoped maybe LaRose was exaggerating. He didn't seem quite that bad when I had spoken to him. Wow, that's weird. Anyway, sorry, the book. You haven't seen it? Mm. She shook her head. I don't get out much, though. If it's around here, I probably wouldn't see it. Didn't even realize my neighbors were missing until the police Whoa. came knocking. Oh, geez, the squirrels, yeah. Didn't it turn out they just went on a cruise to the Pacific Islands because they're rich and got bored? It was on the news for ages. Eh, no. I accidentally started the rumor that they just ran off to go on a cruise during the school term. Probably true. They were rich. Rich people do that stuff, right? I don't think she was expecting an answer. Ugh. Fucking <clears throat> eat the rich. Look, I was brainstorming, okay? It's not my fault the police just took that as a fact and ended the investigation immediately. I'm sure they're all fine. Police just dumped all the evidence they collected outside and left. ACAM, right? All cops are... monsters? ACAM, all cops are messy. Point is, you could go poke around in the boxes if you want, they won't care. Maybe you'll find your book. Oh, fuck. Huh, yeah, maybe. This plot is very surreal. <laughs> and I get the feeling it's meant to be. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's ask a little more about the area. Is there anywhere else around here an old playbook might be hiding? Oh. Eh, there's the woods. They're pretty big. There's bound to be at least one book in there. She faked a big blow of smoke from her cigarette. Though I'd avoid them if I were you, they're dark, nasty, and no one lives there anyway. Well, I mean, there's a beehive, but they're a bunch of authoritarian jackasses, so they don't really count. <laughs> I tried to go paint there once, and they got pretty pissy with me. The swarm of fake socialist mini-dictators. There's not a whole lot on the road either, besides a sheep field and that fucked up magpie. No, this place is kind of boring. That's why I moved here, to get some... space. It didn't work. Cyberbat Wildstar always used to say, Space is where you make it. That's fucking dumb. <laughs> uh, right. Does that actually mean anything? Or No, not really. It's from some cartoon. So wait, where did you used to live? Before you moved out here, I mean. Town. I teach there. Oh, you're one of the art history lecturers at the uni? Do you teach the Blue Hill art history classes in second year of regional history and culture studies? I do that course. I'm sure I might have seen you around. I teach preschoolers how to use glitter pens. <laughs> Oops. Anger seemed to burn under her surface. I was worried her wine bottle would shatter in her vice-like grip. They don't appreciate my art. I decided to run away before I said anything else stupid. Well, anyway, sorry to bother you. I'll go take a look at those evidence boxes. Thanks for your help. Good luck with... I glanced towards Parsnip's cottage. <coughs> Discordant trumpet voices were still piping out of it. <laughs> Finally, the same note three times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> LaRose nodded. She seemed to know what I meant. She went straight back to staring off into the distance. I let her get on with it and headed over to the neighboring cottage. LaRose was right. The police had left their investigation unfinished and just ditched the evidence into a couple of boxes. 
Fortunately, the summer had been a dry one, and everything seemed to be in good condition. I peered through one of the cottage's windows. It was definitely deserted. It was probably a pretty nice place when it was looked after. I could see the occasional bit of half-eaten food laying around on the floor, making a mess of the otherwise cozy middle-class countryside retreat. <clears throat> I started sorting through the box, labeled Kitchen 1. Most of it seemed to be old bits of snack packaging and half-eaten food. Gross. Fortunately, most of it was so artificial it wasn't even capable of molding. <laughs> Interestingly, a DVD copy of Jenny Jason's Archery Training Time for the Game Machine 100 also had a large bite taken out of it, and the toaster seemed to have lick marks on the grill. Well, yeah, but nobody liked Link's crossbow training. Let's be <laughs> honest here. An entire box of sugar acorns seemed to have been emptied into the box, coating everything with a thin layer of nutritionless dust. Someone had been very hungry. The next box, Kitchen 2, only had a couple of gas canisters inside. I guess they were for the cottage's stove. I don't think... Daffodil Lane has much in the way of actual infrastructure. The last box, labeled Kids Room, contained the only real interesting stuff. My eyes went straight towards a small games console and a selection of video games I s selection of video games. Nice. I spotted Ending that sentence one, like a pro. I spotted one of my favorites, Gun Attack 2. Oh, hey, this kid is one of those little fuckers who always screamed abuse at me when I tried to play that online. Actually, I probably shouldn't refer to a probably missing kid as a little fucker. That feels a little wrong. <laughs> there were more sweet wrappers, though the kid had clearly diversified their diet by eating crisps on special occasions. <laughs> this kid doesn't seem the type to collect old play scripts. I doubt it would be in here. In fact, I don't think there's a single word in this box that isn't a brand name. As I said this, I realized I was wrong. There were some very obvious words in the box, and I don't know how I missed them before. On a small paper booklet, scrawled and faded felt tip writing read, There is a monster near the woods. Hey, that's me! <laughs> Underneath was a crude scribble, vaguely resembling a crouching figure, with a woolly, thick body and four eyes. Some kind of imaginary monster, or maybe a wool suitor, I thought. Ah, uh, nice. Oh shit, that's ominous. The handwriting was childlike and shaky. It couldn't have been more than a month old. It was probably written as part of some silly game, I thought, but that didn't stop it from filling me with dread. What was the monster? That's me! <laughs> I'd stupidly spent all my first term reading books about local cryptids, something I was now starting to regret. I didn't actually believe in them, but seeing a warning about a monster on a possibly missing kid's possession freaked me out a little. Maybe the kid was right. Maybe Mr. Sproingy had got them, or <laughs> Old Lady Whitetail, or even the Wilted Rose Water Snake. Although I doubted that last one even in my slightly paranoid state. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine the Wilted Rose Water Snake lived in Wilted Rose Lake, like 30 miles away, unless it had been the victim of particularly poor branding. <laughs> nice. I started to admit spending so much time reading about silly monsters instead of doing my actual work had been a bad move. Nah. I felt sure any second now I'd hear the sound of Clayton Wimberly, the five-faced eye stabber behind me that I'd turn around and presumably get my eye stabbed. I shook it off. I was being silly, but silly, but I still felt you, uneasy. You were being what? Sally. Okay. Who's Sally? Why are we Sally now? <laughs> I realized the message was written on the front of a small scrap paper booklet. It looked like it had been written and illustrated by the kit. <clears throat> Squirrel Warrior Princess Adventure. Oh, this sounds great already. Squirrel Warrior Princess was on an adventure to save the Squirrel Princess Dragon. Yeah! She went through the hills and there was a monster shaped like a woolly person Squirrel Warrior Princess shot him with a bow and arrows and won. Yay! That is what you get if you are my enemy, said Squirrel Warrior Princess, said Squirrel. She drove her car, 
big car fast and reach Prassel Grimskull. Nice. I'm here to save you, Squirrel Princess Dragon, said Squirrel Warrior Princess. She, nice. She went through the castle and used her gun <laughs> to shoot the bad enemies and she went up the castle. Oh man, I'm invested in this. No one can defeat me. I am the strongest warrior, I said. A skeleton popped out, but Squirrel Warrior Princess punched it and it fell down and cried and I laughed at it. Nice. That was really brave. Thank you for saving me, said Squirrel Princess Dragon. She flapper her dragon wings. She has dragon wings and can breathe fire, but she's a squirrel. Nice. They play video games together in one single player on Medolion of Honor the End. Medal of Honor. <laughs> Inspiring. <laughs> I decided it was best to leave before I left much more incriminating DNA on everything. Felt pretty sure I wasn't going to find the play in amongst that junk and I wasn't breaking into what was technically still a crime scene on Nikita's behalf. So I headed down the lane to the last cottage. I strolled past the sheep field. The silly creatures were absentmindedly chewing on grass, as sheep were apt to do. It looked like a refreshingly simple life. But also they're still anthropomorphic sheep. Oh my god, kind of what? fucked up. The field was overshadowed by a large tree. There seemed to be a few shiny pieces of jewelry trapped high up in the branches. Maybe it was one of LaRose's art pieces. A ragged nest was perched high up near the top. It looked deserted. This was probably where that fucked up bird LaRose had mentioned lived. It was a pretty fucked up bird. It was a very fucked up bird. <laughs> the cottage at the end of Daffodil Lane was, all, uh, was, a, was a bleak building as well. Wow. <laughs> the windows and door were all boarded up. Its interior was dark, and the entire building had an uneasy aura about it. Around it, too. Yeah. <laughs> Compared to its scenic surroundings, this place was a septic sore. I remembered the child's creepy message. If there was anywhere near the woods a monster would live, it was here. I was almost relieved. To... I had no way of getting the boarded up door open. Oh no, there's no way I can get into this cottage. I am so weak and brittle. <clears throat> I felt a little cowardly, so I went out of my way to half-heartedly tug at one of the planks. Fortunately, I'd never been strong, and estrogen has further reduced my ability to pull planks off of things. Nailed it. Well, that was conclusive. I can't possibly get these off with my weak little arms. Oh, noodle arms. I almost used this as, as an excuse to get out of doing Nikita's busy work, but without her help, I knew I'd fail my coursework. I wasn't going to go home a failure. I will forever regret not taking the excuse. I should get a crowbar or something. I think that's how people get planks off things in, like, games and stuff. I learned that from my favorite game character, Grover Freeman. <laughs> I'll head to town. I'm sure I can find some boring old person shop that sells tools there. I dusted off my hands and started my hike back to town, somewhat regretting never learning to ride a bike. <clears throat> The monster near the woods would have to wait. Huh. Can't believe we'd literally just do a two hour walk there and back. Okay, <laughs> sure. It was a long walk back to town. Still, the exercise was probably good for me. I hadn't spent much time in town since moving to Blue Hills. It's too loud and busy for me. I was looking for a tool shop or something when I noticed a small shop called Heidi's. Hi, that's me. And the window was a big poster, all crowbars, half price. That was convenient, for sure. <laughs> that was very convenient. Shop seemed empty. What the fuck is this play? Oh my god. Hello? Is anyone here? Nothing. Snack. There was a door behind the counter, slightly ajar. I guess it led to an office or something. So is it a door or a jar? <laughs> it can't both be a door and a jar. Maybe the owner is in there. Get it? In the jar. Because the word ajar sounds like a space jar. Yeah. Okay. I can explain <laughs> it more if you want me to. Hi. Let's peek. We're going to peek? We're not just going to grab our crowbar and go? Let's peek. All right, we're peeking. I figured I'd peek through the door. The shopkeeper hadn't responded when I called, so I was worried they'd had an accident or something. I leaned to the side a little, squinting to see into the dark room. My eyesight is really bad, so I just saw a slightly dark looking room. Predictable. Kind of. They've got candy in jars, like you're meant to grab a few, but then also tools that are like 
clearly individually plastic wrapped for sale. And... Listen, I don't know what's going on here. It didn't seem as weird to me as someone who sometimes spent summers getting the penny candy from a countryside corner store. No, like, I, <laughs> like, uh, we, we had a fucking, uh, we had a fucking place where we could get penny candy out of jars too. It's just that they didn't put the penny candy in jars right next to the individually <laughs> plastic sealed, uh, tools. And there weren't feathers coming out of the vending machine. Ah. Ah. A hyena stepped through. She looked annoyed with my spying. Either her spots were dyed red or she was splattered in blood. I assumed this must have been Heidi. Hi, that's me. What are you peeping? Oh, okay, no, that's not her voice. <laughs> <laughs> what are you peeping at, Missy? <clears throat> what are you What are you peeping at, Missy? She seemed mad. Ah. This wasn't the fantastic customer service I'd expect from a shop. Not that I'm one to complain about poor customer service. I'm not a cop. <laughs> oh, I... Well, sorry. I thought you were dead or like... Dead or something. You didn't say anything when I called. Ah! <laughs> uh-huh. I didn't hear you when you called. Fair enough. She seemed to have calmed down and lent on... Le le lent? Leant? How do you say that? I don't know. Welcome to Heidi's. How can I help you today? That only looked and sounded extremely forced. I saw the poster for crowbars. Could I get one? I saw that you have it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. You need to... It was an exceptionally fake laugh. I was a little worried I was being mocked. <laughs> Sorry, kid. I sold out a few hours ago. Unlucky. I'd overstocked. Typed an extra three zeros onto the supplier's site. Ha! Huh. Ended up with 2,000 of the things. I had to start selling them off dirt cheap, but then the supplier just bought them all back. <gasps> Guess they want to resell them. Still, made a good profit on it. <laughs> Suckers. She paused for a moment, doubt flashing across her face. She started counting on her fingers, her grin quickly turning into a frown. She recounted and then recounted again. Those fuckers! I made a 4,000 pound loss! Mr. Crowbar is fucking dead! She seemed to remember I was there. Anyway, you want a crowbar, right? What for? You don't look like the DIY type. <laughs> no offense. It was a little offensive. Although admittedly very true. Can I point out one thing? Yeah. I like that the soundtrack is just one loop that keeps going, but changes styles whenever it's any... Uh, uh, for each character. Oh, yeah. That we're talking to. That's really cool. I need to break open a door. I realized that probably sounded pretty suspicious, so... I tried to defuse the situation. I'm not a burglar, it's my door. And a strange uh, mix of resignation and confusion appeared on her face. You accidentally boarded up your own door. <laughs> uh Hmm. What do we do here? I don't know. You you you've been the one driving, so I'm gonna let you continue. I don't know. What if I what if I want you to take a turn at the wheel? What? Why me? <laughs> I, I think Heidi's a bit too canny. Yeah. I I, I think yeah, being admit forthright it. with her is the best way. Okay, I'm breaking into a house, but it's abandoned. It's urban exploration. Albeit in this case very rural. Oh, sweet. I don't give a fuck about that. <laughs> I just don't want to end up complicit in you breaking into someone's house and kicking them to death. I was relieved she was going to let me have a crowbar, but also slightly offended that I apparently looked like a very inefficient murderer. Why are there feathers in the snack machine? I don't know. Wait, are the feathers actual Heidi? <laughs> That'd be funny. This is not Heidi. Oh no. 
Heidi dashed through the door behind the counter and quickly reappeared with a crowbar. Hey, this is one of my <laughs> this is one of my personal crowbars, and I need I need my others. So if you somehow break it, don't come begging for a replacement. I don't offer warranties. <laughs> That's fifteen dollars. I rooted through my pockets 15 pounds. and realized that I'd forgotten my wallet. All I had was about $3 in coins and a D-Mon trading card, which is a little odd since I don't even collect those. Uh, I kind of forgot my money. You forgot you needed money to pay for things at shops? Uh, yeah, I guess. Do you accept trading cards? She didn't look amused. She drummed her I fingers not on amused. the counter for a moment. I am not amused at all. Okay, whatever. What if you owe me a favor? Uh-oh. I hoped this wasn't going to be a weird sex thing. It's not a weird sex thing. Don't make that face. <laughs> and die. Wait, wait. Yeah, is that pervert? Yeah. Yep. I suddenly resented my naturally pervy face. I wasn't thinking that. What was it you did want? Nothing crazy, just helping you sort some extra stock. Usually I have to do it myself, but two hands are better than one, right? Of course you have to sign an NDA. Or not, what do I care? I have a taser! It didn't sound very exciting, <laughs> but I needed the crowbar, so I didn't have much choice. I, I can still tase you anyway. You want? <laughs> no? Alright. Okay, as so long as it's just something small and legal. <laughs> Another unconvincing laugh. I think it was supposed to sound friendly. Yeah, it's fine. It's small. It's legal. Did you just try to fake a reassuring laugh? Fuck off. It was real. Give me your number so I can get a hold of you. I gave her my number, hoping I wasn't about to end up crossing any borders with five kilos of counterfeit electronics hidden in my clothes because I knew I'd be too awkward to say no to that. <laughs> Great, I'll give you a call when I need you. I prefer it to texting. Easier to shout. <laughs> and don't try to get away for free. I have a taser. <laughs> taser. She put her hand out for a handshake. I guess she wanted to seal the deal. I limply shook it with my puny little arm. Uh, sure. Thanks for the crowbar. I guess I'll see you soon. I can still tase you if you want. <laughs> I left the shop armed with a crowbar, reflecting on how I seem to operate entirely on a favor-based system these days. Oh well, I thought. It was cheap. Nice. I was pretty hungry, and as I walked through town, my eyes were drawn to a small shop called Greg's Bakery. The shop had a charmingly decorated exterior. We only have three pounds. <laughs> albeit a little cutesy for my taste. I gazed at the few at the feud on display in the window, and I'm pretty sure I drooled on myself. The feud? It looked really good. I really needed some sugar. <gasps> Hi, welcome to Greg's Bakery. I'm Greg, and this is my bakery. Greg has sharp fangs like a bat, which is nice, though obviously that isn't important. Oh, hey, I'm here to eat cakes. Got you, pizza on display in the fucking you, bake case. Do you sell cakes? Double sugar mocha. I love the pizza on display in the bake <laughs> case, though. That's so. I don't know why I asked that. I knew they sold cakes. I'd just been drooling over their display. Oh, we sure do. I make them fresh every day. Did any catch your eye? If you decide you don't want a cake, I have plenty of other pastries and treats for you. A nice bun, a pizza slice, a donut, vegetable rolls, a bag of sprinkles. The choice is yours. They seemed nice, albeit slightly hyperactive. I kind of suck at buying food, especially when there's so much choice. So I was glad to hear the door loudly open behind me and distract Greg. Hiya, Belle! The usual? Mm, you betcha, hon. How's work going? Mm, thanks, it's been a quiet day so far, but now I have two customers at once! Exciting, huh? What was it you wanted me to get you? They were looking at me, and I still hadn't decided what I wanted. I, uh, can I get a... I've been cut from another milk delivery route, Greg. Can you believe it? What? No way! Another one? How come? 
The distraction gave me a chance to pick something. My eyes scanned across the cakes, desperately trying to choose one. My old manager left a few weeks back, and the new one is, uh... Semi-competent? He noticed it was taking me the entire day to do the morning run, and that they were paying me to deliver, em to, deliver to empty buildings. I was like, no way! My contract says I have to! But he read my contract, and it doesn't. The contract excuse had worked flawlessly for like four years, so I had no backup plan. So yep, I'm just delivering to North Acre since they refuse to let us deliver via drone like we do everywhere else now. I'm almost obsolete. Good job those NIMBYs are keeping me in a job for a little longer. Oh no, North Acres! I, <laughs> wait, what, 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 what? <laughs> no, that's canon now. I heard bad things about that place. Mm, they aren't too keen outsiders. What a sucky situation. Oh heck, have your food on me. They placed Bell's order on the counter and cancelled the payment. Two large coffees and four vegetable sausage rolls. A pretty impressive lunch. Oh, you're too kind, hun. I'll make it up to you. North Acres ain't so bad. I just ignore the locals and don't hang around. I think she must have noticed me staring at the cake slack-jawed. Sorry for pushing in, hun. I'm not used to there being other people here. It's pretty quiet most days. Uh... Oh no, I'm sorry, I got distracted. What is it that you wanted? Hmm? I remember turning to look at them wide-eyed in fear. Donut? We can't pay for a cake, so let's get a donut. Yeah. I wanted a donut, but somehow got hurt in my own confusion and messed up. I cake. <laughs> we got Pokemon. I jabbed a finger meekly at a random cupcake. One triple chocolate muffin coming right up? This wasn't going to plan. They picked up the muffin with some tongs and slid it into a paper bag. And the other cakes, drinks, or savories? A cheese bake, maybe? I, uh, I'll get another muffin, please? Great choice! Belle was looking at me, munching on one of her rolls. Mm, these cakes are delicious. She seemed amused by my inability to buy cakes. I really love the taste of these cakes. I don't think I've seen you around here before. What's your name, hon? Oh, I'm Trixie. Trixie Glimmer Smith. I only moved here a few months back, and I don't get out much. Nice to meet you, Trixie. The name's Belle. She stepped forward with her arm outstretched, and I shook her hook. It was really clunky and awkward since she didn't have fingers. I hope this ain't too presumptuous, but... If you're looking to make some friends here, you're always welcome to come down to the Attic Mouse, the bar just around the corner. It's always the nice to make mouse, some new pals. from here. Greece? What? Attic also means... Yeah. I, I knew you are going to need to explain it. I'd really... It also means that... From Greece? Really? Wasn't it... I'm trying to remember if it's specifically Athens. It might be specifically oh, Athens. Oh, okay. Especially if you're new to the area. I sometimes go with Belle, but I've been too busy with the bakery recently. Everyone there is super nice, very gay too, so you can just be yourself. Guess we're lucky to live in the queerest town in the country. Very gay. I mean, not officially, sure, but heck, you try finding something here who isn't queer. Relating to Athens. <laughs> nice, you were also right. Also the dialect of Greek used by the ancient Athenians. Now you know. Now I know. The more you know. They had a point. Everyone I met here was pretty fucking gay. Oh, thanks for the invite. I'm not too good with social stuff, though. <laughs> That's fair. You're always welcome to come along, though, hon. Just thought it'd be nice to let you know that there's somewhere you can go if you need it, you know? I realized it was getting late, and I still had to walk back to the cottage. Crap, I gotta go. Sorry. I dropped some coins on the counter and ran out of the bakery. I hope I paid enough. I didn't. <laughs> I heard the pair say bye, bye behind me. They bye. both seemed kind of nice, albeit a little scary. Oh, I want pastries so bad. God, so do I. Do we have enough time to get pa We don't have enough we time don't. to get pastries. Fuck, it's too late. We could go to the, like, the 24-hour place. We could. But their pastries suck. They're fine. They're acceptable. I had to take a short break to recover from gorging on about 5,000 calories of muffin, but I eventually reached the abandoned cottage at the end of Daffodil Lane. I managed to pry the front door open with the crowbar, which was tough, given my complete lack of muscle mass. Nice. 
Regardless, I got the door open and tossed the crowbar away. My weak little arms couldn't carry it anymore. Without waiting around, I stepped through the ding dingy portal. Using the word portal to refer to doors is so nice. I was immediately hit by a wall of stale air and decay. Hey, she stepped into our storage room. Nice. Ah, Trixie, you might want to get out of our back room there. This place is disgusting. I flicked my torch on and finally realized it had no batteries. Frustrated, I chucked it on the floor. Litterbug. I'd have to rely on my eyesight, which had been rapidly deteriorating since I started staying up till 5 a.m., using my laptop screen as my only light source. Not that it was great to begin with, given my condition. The building was dim, with a few shafts of light piercing the boarded windows. What looked like a basement door was slightly ajar. A cold and unpleasant stench seemed to crawl from it. I wanted to spend as little time in this place as possible. I decided to take a look around the ground floor before heading downstairs. I stepped into what seemed to be the kitchen. Mm. Water dripped from the wooden ceiling into the sink, which was close to overflowing. The water was dark and still. A few tufts of wool floated on the surface, stained a dirty brown. A gross smell seeped into the room from the pantry. I carefully pried it open, and then scrolled back a couple lines. Oh, whoops. And was relieved to not find any dead bodies. I'm not doing that on purpose. Hold on. Lock the scroll. Yep. Wheel okay, I'm, I'm switching it to chunk mode. Instead, I found a small garden's worth of decom decompositing grass melting into a pool of green frothy liquid. Oh, gross what? Who would keep grass in their pantry? I poked around in the pantry, trying to uncover anything else that might be hidden. At the very back, buried under some of the decaying grass, I found a tin of pineapple rings. The best before date was over two decades ago. The front depicted a happy pineapple mascot. Eat me, he said. Eat me. <laughs> Sorry, Happy Pineapple Abomination, but I don't think I should. Besides, I don't have a can opener. The bedroom was evidently plainly decorated years ago, but was now completely derelict. A bookshelf stood against one of the walls, but it was almost completely empty. The only books remaining were Manners for Girls and <laughs> Seven Plants I Saw, an adventure story. That does sound very adventurous. <clears throat> I decided not to read them. Like the kitchen, the window here had been boarded up, though I noticed that the planks seemed to have been taken from the bed's frame, given that the mattress slumped onto the floor. A pile of tools on the floor looked like the likely culprits for the renovations to this place's windows. I noted one of the tools was a sturdy crowbar. Ugh. I went to all that <laughs> trouble getting a crowbar when I could have just broken in here and got one for free. <laughs> the tools looked old, but judging by their relative cleanliness, appeared to have been used recently. Next to the bed was a small dresser, and on top of that a picture frame. I wiped the dust away from the photograph. Look at this photograph. Every time it makes me... <laughs> to reveal a woman... <laughs> Probably in her 40s. The photograph itself had that old-fashioned faded look to it, and her hair looked very 80s. I guess this lady must have lived here before abandoning the cottage. It doesn't look like she properly packed when she left, though, given that a load of her stuff seems to be here. Hmm. There was a loud groan from upstairs. Ugh. Ugh. The settling of the cottage's timber frame, I Oh, I guess I'll take it. I mean, it wasn't what I was hoping for, but I guess I can settle. <laughs> nice. Regardless, it gave me a scare. Beep. Meep. Ugh, this place has me really on edge. Let's hurry this up. The bathroom window was broken, and one of the boards seemed to have fallen off. A black feather was snagged on one of the nails still left in the frame. Uh-oh. We've seen black feathers before. In a vending machine. <clears throat> the water tank that was probably meant to be above the toilet 
had fallen down, littering the floor with smashed ceramic shards and leaving a moldy damp patch spreading from the toilet's gutted remains. Oh, that's so good. I'm a connoisseur of disgusting toilet descriptions, <laughs> so this... Putting that one in the bank for later. Putting that one in the bank for later. The bottom few inches of the bathtub were stained brown, as if it had been full of rancid water for some time before being emptied. The plug hole was matted with wool, almost like a spider web. Ugh, this is nasty. What's wrong with this place? No wonder it smells like... I was cut off as the house groaned. Mm, as if settling. I mean... <sighs> You really don't have any leg in the back. <laughs> Only then did I realize how weak the floor seemed to be in this room and stepped back. I had no intention of falling through into whatever waited for me in the basement. I returned to the living room where I had first entered the house. I hadn't really looked around it when I first got here. It was totally trashed. The furniture was a mess, the floor was covered in junk, and some water appeared to drip down from the attic onto the sofa, which was coated in white mold. What looked like blood stained the floor and seeped into the musty sofa. It couldn't be more than a month or two old. How can you estimate that? <clears throat> Lots of experience looking at blood. Yeah, okay. Uh, this isn't good. Hopefully someone just had a minor accident, which made them lose about four liters of blood. It's old, though. I'm sure any murderer who lived here would have left ages ago. The smell probably drove them off. I stepped a little further into the room and almost tripped over something. A video game cartridge? It didn't look as dusty or decrepit as the rest of the house. Oh, no. And definitely wasn't old enough to be from the previous owners. Oh, no. <gasps> Some brown hairs and white wool blocked the pins and the image printed on the front was scratched, but still readable. Gun Shoot 4 Nice. I really enjoyed Gun Shoot 3. Yoink. All I'm saying is we can clean it up and get in the resale. It's a collector's item. Yoink. I figured there wasn't much use lying around in this cottage, so I decided to take it with me. Maybe I could wind down with it when I got back to my room? On the ceiling, a small trapdoor led to the attic, but there didn't seem to be any way up to it. I only now noticed the harsh carvings had been dug into the wall and inlaid with golden paint. Dozens of identical eyes had been watching me. Well, that's not good. I found myself drawn to them. The house suddenly shuddered and I almost Ugh. collapsed. Ah! I regained my footing. Thankfully, the house had remained standing. I turned away from the drawings, deciding to avoid them for now. There didn't seem to be any more to see on the ground floor, and I still hadn't found that book. There was only one thing for it. I'd have to go into the dark, dingy murder basement. Really? I forced the door open on its rusted hinges and made my way down the stone stairs. I mean, I get that our, that our narrator is... You know, definitely suffering some kind of minor psychological break at this point, but still. The decaying air grew worse with each step. Ugh, this better not take long. The air in this place is probably cutting years off my life. The stairs emerged into a large basement, almost as big as the entire ground floor. Oh my god, and you can actually fucking see the, uh, the lighting in here is better than it was upstairs. My eyes were immediately drawn to the horrific scene at the center of the room. Ah! What is this? Are those... Two skulls were positioned around the chipped remains. Some kind of symbol etched into the floor. The skulls' hollow eyes stared right at me. I stepped away from the grisly scene in shock, thankfully not tripping in the process. But then I blinked and realized the skulls were facing away from me. My eyes must have been playing tricks. Oh, this is messed up. I better look around quickly. I really don't want to stay here much longer. Why are you looking around still? It's okay. After a closer examination, it was clear the skulls belonged to a pair of squirrels. Oh, gosh. 
So much for La Rosa's Pacific Cruise theory. These both seem adult size though, which means the girl is missing. Hopefully I don't find her. Here. I can't tell if like it does it does our reactions do feel very surreal and like <laughs> right? Like it definitely feels like our are like are we're reacting in a way that is odd. The skulls were undamaged, with no indication of how their owners may have died. Strangely, I don't recall seeing any other bones around the cottage. Because we have no motivation to play detective here. We just want to, like, we were looking for a book, and at this point, like, even if we're looking for just a book for a friend, we're just like, okay, nope, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> so, huh. I decided to leave them to their rest. Not that I'd been brave enough to do anything other than nervously stare at them from a distance anyway. With the most obvious thing in the room thoroughly examined, I took a look at the rest of the basement. This whole room looked like something from one of those trashy horror stories I'd read. It was uncanny. Nice. Part of me hoped this was just the setting of a really well-decorated de LARP, but I felt pretty sure that was wishful thinking. The basement was littered with black and white feathers. It looked like a bird had been in a fight, but with who? More of the feathers that we saw at, uh... At Heidi's. We haven't met any birds yet, have we? Because they're dead in the back room at Heidi's. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the most out of thing in the murder basement was the small collection of dry cake crumbs scattered across the floor. Despite there only being a sliver of cake left, I felt my stomach tighten. A deep and primal part of me knew it was a bad cake. I took a closer look at the symbol. It was etched into the stone with some kind of tool and gilded with golden paint. It depicted one of the eyes I had seen painted upstairs. It was no less unnerving here, especially given the rest of the room. I blinked, and my mind returned full of fuzz. I knew something about the room was different. I just stared at the floor for what felt like hours, desperate not to see what might have changed. But eventually I knew I had to be brave and looked up. The walls of the basement were blanketed in hundreds of yellow eyes. I could feel every single one burn into me, staring deep into my soul. My mind ached. I closed my eyes and counted to ten. With each increment, my mind fuzz grew louder and more erratic. When I opened my eyes, my mind fell quiet once more. The walls were blank. And yet I couldn't shake the feeling I was being watched. How's it going there, Trixie? You having a good one? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> What's going on in this place? Okay, breathe. I need to get outside. This gross air is messing with my head. I probably have like five terminal illnesses now. Okay, so I know so far it looks like I spent all week running errands and stuff, but trust me, I have my reasons, as I hope you'll soon agree. This is where things get a little hard to recall, but I'll do my best in the interest of proving why I'm going to need a few weeks extra to finish my coursework. Thanks for reading this far, by the way, faculty admin team. I appreciate it. Thanks. Ah, I forgot the framing <laughs> device. <laughs> there was a loud screech and the cottage above me started to shake and creak. <gasps> that's really f I, l I had forgot that that was the framing device and that's so good. Oh, wow. So we're telling that we basically written this down to tell it to the admin team. Like, yeah, so because all this fucked up shit happened, I'm just going to need a couple extra weeks yeah. on my coursework. Yeah. I heard a long groan as the basement door shut. The cottage continued to shudder, shudder even. Shudder? I could hear furniture topple over and slam against walls above me. I need to get out of well, here. Well, it's weird. The one thing we know for sure is that we live. Before I could make a move, wisps of golden mist curled around the two skulls. They jerked around to face me before lifting off the ground as if pulled by puppet strings. No. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. No, it's like, no. <laughs> like disbelief. <laughs> like, no. The floating bones remained motionless in the air, their eye sockets boring deep into me. And these eye sockets are so boring. That's the entire history of the economic exports of the country of Lithuania in the past 47 years. I don't know. That let's go back kind to of interesting. Let's go back to year 48. <laughs> <laughs> Stolen, released beyond betrayal cloud, waves Carcosa. You want to do that? All right. Oh, wait. 
Sorry. No, it's all right. No, I forgot. I thought it was Trixie. No, no, no. No, I don't want it. You don't want it? <laughs> Stolen release beyond betrayal, cloud waves, carcosa. The skulls called into my mind, a rasping voice that felt as if it is coming from within my own thoughts. Upstairs, the cottage continued to shake, the sound drowning out even my breathing, but the voice remained clear. The rabbit betrayal, how blue starlight, carcosa. Carcosa. The dread city trapped forever under the red skies of the Hyades, the stolen crown jewel of a long-forgotten empire, the setting of the King in Yellow. That much I knew. How did we know? Okay, whatever, sure. If the play was anywhere, it would be here, but that was hardly at the forefront of my mind at this point. The Spire Broken Body Carcosa. I, uh, what are you? I am the abomination, the malformed stock, the accursed meat, filthy, unclean. Trapped Carcosa, the ashen streets, the dying slumber beneath the lake forever, and yet... free. Please, I didn't mean to disturb you, I just... My friend, she... My friend made me come here, she wants the play. The... The... The King in Yellow. At the mention of the King in Yellow, the skulls imploded with a loud crack. The eye socket split, the craniums almost appeared to collapse into themselves. I stumbled backwards, almost falling as shards of bone and tooth rattled onto the stone floor. The cursed place stolen, the monochrome prophet, the broken royal, they had it stolen, new owner for the play found. Trapped Carcosa forever, and yet I walk again. We will meet again, small white rat. The skulls dropped to the floor with a loud crash. The golden glow dissipated, and as the room fell silent, I could feel myself toppling towards the cold floor as my mind disconnected. Damn. My eyes slowly opened. A feeling of grogginess and nausea had taken over my body. I felt my mind spin. I could make out grass fluttering gently in the breeze. I looked up. A sheep gazed down at me as she chewed on some grass. As I stirred, she wandered off and left me be. I took some time to properly come to, but I soon realized I was crumpled in the sheep field on Daffodil Lane. The moon cast white rays across me, and I wondered how long I had been there. Ugh. What happened? It was here. I slowly started to remember my time in the cottage. The decaying rooms, the black and white feathers, the strange symbols, the blood, and the two skulls speaking into my mind fuzz. How much of that actually happened? My eyes slowly started to focus on the grass beside me. There was a box of some kind. Or was it? I squinted at it. Whatever it was, it was wrapped in a shiny yellow skin. I reached a weak hand over to it and ran it across the top of the box. My suspicion was confirmed. It was snake skin. My hand curled around the back of the box and felt paper. It was a book. I grabbed it and pulled it above my eyes where I could see it. Embossed in black amongst the yellow scales was a title. The King in Yellow. Oh, hey, we got it. We're good. <laughs> awesome. Good and GG. Thanks for coming, everyone. We just returned the book and... <sighs> I stared at the playbook. How had it gotten there? It was held shut by a golden ribbon, but that would only take a second to undo it. I started to reach for it, my fingers feeling the soft silk. Suddenly, a bird screeched a horrid caw. I jumped, almost dropping the book on my face. Far away sat in the big jeweled tree, a strange, mangy-looking magpie stared at me. I thought of the feathers in the basement. It was hard to tell at this distance, but it seemed to be staring right at me, its wide eyes reflecting white moonlight like mirrors. I was about to shout over at it, but it took off and flapped away into the darkness of the night. I lay in the field a while longer and watched the woolly sheep munch on the grass. Beep. The king in yellow held tightly against my chest. Beep. 
Eventually, Beep. I managed to pull myself up and started the long trek back to my road. Beep. Beep. Ooh. <laughs> that poster is still really good. I messaged Nikita and told her to meet me in the morning. She was still awake, presumably working on her campaign. Campaign? She se yeah, she's running for class president. Oh, that, okay, sorry. She seemed pretty set on retrieving the king in yellow right then, but when I told her I wasn't going to get back out of bed, she begrudgingly agreed to wait. I shoved... Hmm? Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, every time I see that. <laughs> I shoved the play into my bag and turned my phone off, eventually setting into, settling into a disturbed sleep. My, oh, <laughs> <laughs> my dreams were dark and confused. Me and Belle ran through a dark forest. Something terrible followed us. I could feel its eyes boring into my back. I screamed and stopped. In front of me was a steep cliffside. Belle plummeted off into the darkness below. Far across the gap was another cliff edge. I saw myself stood there looking out at me. A dark figure looked through the woods towards my twin, and with terror I realized that I was looking into a mirror. I spun round to face my assailant and found myself facing a grey, blasted landscape. At the center was a circular pool of black water. Belle stood at the center of the pool, on top of the water. She faced away from me. A flood of black water rose up from the pit to engulf us. I was blinded by it until a bright light tore through the inky darkness. The scene collapsed into itself and I stood in the abandoned basement. I saw myself as a skeleton, the golden glow surrounding me as I turned to dust and cackled maniacally. The horrible dirty bird looked down at me from the top of a withered tree with branches like tangled thorns. It opened its beak to caw at me, but no sound came out. The bird broke into wisps of cloud vapor and dissolved into the dark night. I looked down, and in my hands was the king in yellow. The bird's caw finally sounded, and I looked up. Where was once the tree was now a misty shoreline. In front of me was a spire of gleaming ivory, but before my eyes I saw it rot and decay. Behind the terrible city rose a great moon. Mist dripped from it as it emerged from a lake of cloud. The black stars of the Hyades hung above me, pinpricks of oil in the red sky. Watching me from across leagues of rolling white waves stood the solitary figure of the king in yellow. He seemed to travel toward me, closer and closer, as his tattered wrappings flapped in the wind. His long, bony arms stretched to remove the pallid mask, and I knew I had found myself on the path to a truly terrible fate. I wake up. What a terrible night for a curse. <laughs> Whoops, I hit the mic. Nope. It was 9am, several hours earlier than I would normally wake up. But after that nightmare, I was glad to be conscious. <sighs> Nikita tried to tell me off for waking up late, so I assumed she wouldn't be expecting me awake for a few hours. Sorry, liked to tell me off. My head still felt stuffy, so I decided to walk around the university grounds and get some air. Snack! Nikita is your future, prepare for it. <laughs> It was a pleasant morning. A gentle wind blew softly on my weary eyes, a welcome break from the heat wave. Still, it seemed like it was going to be another warm summer day. Unfortunate. It was the last thing I needed with my albinism. I'd have to put a lot of sun shampoo on my fur. The uni campus was really nice, albeit a little old-fashioned. It looked like somewhere that would be haunted, and actually was, albeit only by the occasional gaunt-looking PhD student. Not that I was complaining, whether my experience in the basement was real or not, I'd had quite enough of ghosts for now. I walked past the old clock tower. It would have looked a lot more impressive if it wasn't broken. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you don't replace it with a digital one or something. Digital clock tower. Ha! Huh. Like a giant KCO watch. There you go. Also, now I have Castle music playing, Castlevania music playing on loop in my head. 
Although obviously I'm aware that it isn't really your department. That wasn't an attack on you faculty admins. Below that was an old statue of the university's founder, P.H. Lovecraft. <laughs> he was a speciesist dickhead, but now he is just dead. Nice. I stopped. I'd found one of Nikita's student presidency posters. It was pretty daunting. Though, on the plus side, she changed her slogan to something slightly less fascist. Nikita is your future. Prepare for it. Although, in retrospect, that might have been worse. Hmm. There was a box of leaflets under it. Nikita was certainly prepared for next year's election. It was almost a shame the caretakers would probably take this stuff down by next week. <gasps> <laughs> I kind of wanted to take a look at one of the leaflets, if just out of morbid curiosity. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. Blue Bell University Student Union Presidency Election 2019. Nikita, a manifesto for a stronger world. Blue Bell University, once the ninth highest rated university in the country, now a decaying, ruined institution sitting at a lowly 11th. Its student bodies become lazy, undisciplined, and led astray by bad leadership, for poor facilities, and social societies. But I shall change this. I shall make us strong. Who am I? I am Nikita. I'm the top student on the Regional History and Culture Studies course here at our prestigious university. I shall one day be our greatest student union president. This, fellow students, is my promise to you. My enemy candidates may be many, but I assure you all, among them my equals are none. Tabitha Knight especially is a try-hard bitch and will not save us from our collapse. My five-point plan for the stronger world. One, the library must be expanded and opened eternally so that our minds too may expand. Only through knowledge can we wake our, our rightful place. Can we take our rightful place in the world? Two, school uniforms that give you superpowers for some reason, <laughs> but they get really skimpy when they do. <laughs> we're not doing the Goku uniforms. <laughs> we could, but we're not. <laughs> two, two, too much of the university's budget is spent on frivolous activities, parties, societies, and trips to name but a few. This must be diverted to improve our facilities. Three, the union has many worthless delegates. The sports officer, the society's officer, and the administrative team, among others. These positions should be dissolved. All power must flow to the executive. Four, the student union president should be made a permanent position lest the future president is veer from my vision and lead us back into the abyss. Five, we need to fix the vending machine outside Wilbur Hall that no longer properly dispenses toffee malay bars. <laughs> Thank you for your time. And remember, a vote for my enemies is a vote for your own destruction. Thank you for your input, Kiryu and Satsuki. <laughs> Jeez, Nikita has issues. Wait. Wait, what was that a reference to? That was also Kill a Kill. That was also Kill a Kill. Okay. Sorry. It's it, we, we, we we're currently at a pause in Kill a Kill, and it's been about a week since I last saw it, so forgive me. I tossed the leaflet back into its box. I eventually <laughs> got back to my room and took a quick shower making sure to cover myself in sun shampoo. Ooh. I was really lucky to not get burnt yesterday, given how long I was out. Maybe the spores from that cottage rejuvenated skin and left a healthy glow on your fur? Though looking at my gaunt, tired face in the mirror, I doubted it. I finally got around to cleaning up the cereal I spilt yesterday. Better late than never, I guess. I ended up just fucking about on my laptop to keep my mind off of things while I waited for Nikita. There was a sudden knock at my door. Trixie Glimmersmith, stop writing weird monster erotica and open up! I slammed my laptop shut. I still don't know if she was spying <laughs> on me or if it was a lucky guess. Coming! I threw some old underwear behind my bed in a vain attempt to seem less disgusting and lurched over to my door. I opened it up, and Nikita marched into my room, almost knocking me over. Jeez, hi Nikita. You have the book. Nice to see you too. Cut the crap, Trixie, where is the play? Fine, fine, whatever, but look, we need to talk about some stuff, okay? Some weird shit happened when I was finding this. I rummaged about in my bag for the book, eventually pulling out the scaled yellow tome. It- wow. It's really real. For once, Nikita seemed almost speechless. She walked over to me, seemingly unable to wait to get a hold of it. I handed it over, but part of me wanted to keep it for myself, if just for its value. Nikita was about to undo the ribbon and leaf through its pages, but I put my hand on it, stopping her. She shot me an angry look and almost pulled away. Nikita, seriously, we need to talk. Hmm. 
Fine. <laughs> I told her everything I remembered about yesterday. My time exploring oh. Daffodil Lane, the missing squirrels, the abandoned cottage, the skulls, the ghost, <sighs> waking up in a field. I told her I didn't know, even know where the play had come from. Nikita, I think we need to talk to someone. The police, maybe. There were skulls in that basement. This isn't just some silly thing. <laughs> Trixie, those skulls were obviously props. You said yourself there's an artist on that road. They always do weird shit like that. And no offense, but the options here are either... One, you saw a ghost. Or two, you, the person who reads ghost porn all day, were sleep-deprived, dehydrated, overheating, and breathing mold spores, and imagined a ghost when you saw some spooky props. Then you forgot half the day, and fainted in a field after finding the play in the cottage. It was a good point, but I still felt unsure. <clears throat> well, we, there's a clear option. We can't. Yeah. Yeah. I sighed. You're right, the police are totally corrupt anyway. Thanks, capitalism. There, I told you it was pointless. Now just keep it to yourself, and I'll help you with your coursework again. Once I finish reading the play, naturally. Is that a deal, Smith? I felt wrong for not trying harder to get the police to check out that cottage. I knew it was selfish of me to ignore what might have been a huge deal, but I needed Nikita's help. I couldn't face the idea of going back to my parents after fucking up my education and not talking to them for months. Ooh. I let out an audible sigh. Every time I see it, I'm just like... <sighs> Whatever, as long as we're even now. Of course we are. I never lie. I wasn't sure I believed that. Well, I'm off to read this. I do appreciate your service, Trixie, as much as I hate to admit it. I'll draft your coursework for you in a day or two. You have to finish it yourself, though. I am not your mother. Nikita was being uncharacteristically nice. Maybe she was warming to me? Anyway, you should go get some sleep. You look like shit. Or not, I thought, as Nikita marched out of my room. The king in yellow clutched tightly against her chest. Okay, so, like, I like this thing where the king in yellow is always in yellow, but what if <laughs> it was always in a different color text, but it wasn't yellow? Hmm. You mean, like, blue? Yeah. And it wasn't a king. It's always the king in yellow, but it's in blue text. And it wasn't a king, but a house. And it wasn't... Okay, stop this. <laughs> Thanks, Nikita. You're welcome. I stumbled back into my bed. Nikita was exhausting. I believe that. <sighs> Not as exhausting as... I, I don't have anything for that. <laughs> A buzzing woke me up a few hours later. Someone was calling. I was groggy and confused, so no different to normal. Big mood. I reached for my phone, and through my blurry eyes, I could make out Heidi's name on the screen. <laughs> hey, you owe me a job. I, uh... I stopped when a bit of drool fell out of my mouth. I've never been good with naps. Yeah, big mood. I need you to come by my shop at like five today. Don't bug out now, you owe me for that crowbar, remember? I did owe her, and it wasn't like I had anything else to do. Besides, it would be good to get outside and distract myself for a while, even if I should have been working on my report. You mean distract yourself from the <laughs> poster? <laughs> okay, okay, I'll help. <laughs> Good, my shop at 7. Don't be late, I have a taser. You keep reminding me of this. Oh, okay. Everyone is so rude to me. What kind of a plug is that on her wall there? Uh, that kind. Fair enough. I curled back up in bed. I was still pretty tired. I know those kinds exist because I had a multi-country plug adapter at one point for my phone, uh, but I don't know which ones go to which countries. I just know that's that one. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. I had half a day to kill until Heidi needed me, and I I had half a day to kill. Oh my god. Until Heidi needed me, and I didn't want to sit here stewing on my own thoughts all day. Yesterday had fucked me up pretty badly, whether I want to show it or not. I'd found a coupon for a free bottle of sugar rabies in my sock drawer a few weeks back, so I figured since I had nothing else to do, I could head to town and use it. We never used the free sock coupon. We had a coupon for a free sock? Yeah. 
Would you like to redeem your free pair of socks? Sure. It's, Wait, it's a pair of socks? Yeah, it's it, it's somewhere buried under the junk on this table. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought it was just one free sock, and I'm like, why would I want one sock? <laughs> anyway, the so shopkeeper even uh, let slip that the only reason Sugar Corp was giving the stuff away for free was because anyone who drunk a can lost an average of three teeth, so no one was buying it anymore. Yeah, fair enough. I guess they were hoping people would risk a bottle for free and end up hooked on its dubiously legal chemicals. Nice. I knew better than to wrangle with that since I don't have that many teeth, being a rat and all. Fucking capitalists. I feel you. My phone's clock said it was almost midday, and I hadn't really eaten yet. I figured I'd combine breakfast and lunch. I decided to call this new meal Lunchfest. I thought she has no money. My thoughts were cut off when a familiar figure tapped on the window next to me. I recognized Greg. Hey, that's me? Small sugar glider from yesterday. I'd wandered past their bakery without realizing it. I guess my subconscious was telling me to get lunch fist at Greg's. Yeah, yeah, you do. You want lunch? And I got lunch. Uh, hi, Lunch Greg. fist. <laughs> hey, Trixie, are you here for some tasty treats? Yeah, I guess so. <clears throat> Maybe we brought our wallet today. Maybe. That would be a good move. I looked around at the selection. The triple chocolate muffin I'd eaten yesterday had been really nice. I did kind of want to try something new, though. Pizza. How about a vegetable roll? Yeah. Those sound different. A vegetable roll would be nice. I need to keep an eye on my sugar intake. <laughs> All my vegetable rolls come with a triple chocolate muffin for just 20 bit. Yes! <laughs> Greg's... <laughs> nice job, Greg. Greg scurried back behind the counter and placed the food into a little paper bag. Fortunately, I'd remembered to bring my wallet today. Smooth move. It's nice to see you again. Sorry as the bakery was so busy yesterday, I could see it was making you anxious. It's a lot calmer today. The fact that two customers were considered busy made me feel slightly bad for Greg. Was the bakery not doing well? I'll have you know, depending on your line of business, two customers can be extremely busy. Yeah, that, yeah, that, <laughs> yep, oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, no problem. Sorry for being weird yesterday. <clears throat> it was kind of hot, and I'd already fainted once, and like, I get anxious about buying stuff. Greg laughed sympathetically. <laughs> oh. It's my sympathetic laugh. Oh. oh no, I hope you're feeling better today. Here, have a bottle of water on the house. That should stop you fainting again. Ha. Huh. I felt bad accepting something for free, given my suspicions about Greg's financial situation. Oh, no, no, that's okay, I'll live. No hiking in the sun for me today. <laughs> okay, well, the offer's there. I wouldn't want any of my friends fainting. Their friendliness almost reminded me of Parsnip, though thankfully Greg seemed to be capable of conversations and had an actual personality. <laughs> you seem to like cakes, Trixie. Do you make any yourself? I shook my head. I don't really do much baking, or cooking in general, really. I basically just eat snacks and drink energy drinks. Big mood. I probably have like four years left to live. Oh no, I hope not! They giggled. Don't you like cooking? I don't mind cooking, but like, I have kind of a short attention span, so my food usually ends up burnt. That was a slight understatement. The fire brigade had been called twice since I started uni, thanks to me. I used to bake bread with my parents when I was younger, but we just kind of stopped at some point when I got older. Aw, that's so sad. I used to bake with my dad a lot, but it was really fun. It's probably why I ended up being a baker. You know, I could always use some help here. I could teach you to bake treats. It was a really kind offer. I really... I did want to learn baking, even if it was just another way to fuel my sugar addiction. Oh, geez, that's really kind. I feel like I'd just waste your time, though. Not at all, I need some <clears throat> friends! I'm a bit of a fuck-up, and you probably don't need that when you're already having money truck. <gasps> I trailed off. Greg seemed to see where I was going. I was worried I'd upset them, but they seemed to hide it. Wait, is Greg they them? Fuck! If you don't feel up to it, don't worry! I know tomorrow morning probably won't be very busy, though, so feel free to come along if you change your mind. I did like the idea, and Greg was really sweet. Thanks, Greg. I'll think about it. 
Mm, yeah, that's me. Sorry I'm kind of a mess right now. It's been a tough few days. Weeks. Years. No worries. Just let me know if you're coming along. Would you like my number? I'd like to talk some more, but I have to make a delivery in a few minutes. They motion toward a wedding cake. A lovely icing statue of two cute mice girls Aww. kissing sat on the top. That's pretty gay. Oh, sure, yeah. Greg passed me a business card. Great! Thank you, Trixie! I better close up. I will see you soon! See you, Greg. I waved goodbye and left the bakery, munching on my food. I expected Belle would be at the Attic Mouse Bar down the road, and I figured I may as well give her a visit to waste some time before I met Heidi later, if just to show I wasn't ignoring her offer. The Attic Mouse had a warm, friendly atmosphere, and I was Aww. relieved to see their drinks were super cheap. This looks like a cool bar. By bar standards, at least. I walked inside and found it was pretty quiet. Understandable, really, given the time of day. Belle was sat in a corner by herself with several glasses of alcohol in front of her. I'm not really into alcohol, so I dropped $10 on the bar to pay for my pint of cola and walked over to her. Uh, 10 pounds? Thank you. Sorry, I localized. <laughs> I shouldn't have. Hey. <clears throat> hey, Trixie. Nice to see you came along. Sadly, no one else has. <laughs> ah, well, we pre-order the drink some more for me, I guess. She downed one of her shots. Oh, I mean, I'm not good with groups anyway. Do a lot of people usually show up? Well, there's Greg, who you've met. My pal, LaRose, an artist down deaf down Daffodil Lane way. Wait, I know LaRose, the tall rabbit, right? Oh, no way. Nice lady. She hasn't turned up recently, though. She's, uh, well, she ain't been feeling great recently. It's hard for her to find the energy to hang out, you know? There's also Heidi. She's cool. A little scary, but a great gal. She runs a shop here in town. Yeah, I uh, met her yesterday, too. <laughs> she's more than a little scary, though. <laughs> she's all bark and no bite. Doesn't get on so well with LaRose. They almost ended up ga glassing each other a few weeks back when Heidi said neopunk biker art was better than neopunk bohemian art. <laughs> I don't know what either of those are, so I don't think it was my place to mediate, you know? <laughs> Jeez. It's weird how I met literally all of you by chance yesterday. We all moved to town at the same time just so we could meet you. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Almost too weird, I thought. <laughs> that is weird. We all know each other, and now we all know you, too. She took another sip of her drink. I copied her and sipped my Oh cola. my god, they're the murder cult. Yeah. Nice. I felt a little awkward and just ended up staring at the TV in the corner for a bit. The Prime Minister was giving a speech about sheep sit. Yeah, okay, I see. This, this is other side of the pond. I rolled my eyes, I, it was, so it was probably a UK plug then, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I rolled my eyes, I was getting pretty tired of hearing about it non-stop for the last two years. This is getting ridiculous. Leaving the Northwest Union just because its official sheep mascot bit the Prince Prime Minister's four-year-old? It's so petty. Exactly, if she didn't want her kid getting bit, she shouldn't let her roll around in grass, then go pet a sheep. We both shook our heads and tutted. <laughs> Wait, is the tutting that noise or the noise or the I forget. <laughs> okay. So you're like a milk woman, right? That sounds kind of fun, driving around and seeing places all over. I don't get out much, so... <clears throat> nah, it kind of sucks. Oh. Not much traveling either anymore, I'm afraid. Oh, of course. When you were talking to Greg yesterday, you said you only go to North Acres now, right? North Acres, yeah. A nasty place. Why? She squinted at me quizzically. Oh, it's just like I study local history and stuff. North Acres is meant to be really good for that, right? It's kind of old-fashioned and remote, despite only being a few miles from town. I wanted to take a look around there, but it's kind of hard to get to. I couldn't find any buses that go that way, and no way am I paying for a taxi. <clears throat> yeah, they shoot down every proposal for a bus route. I think that might be the only outside interaction they get besides the postman. They're a weird lot. 
I try not to spend too much time there. She shrugged and took another drink. Mmm, alcohol. But hey, if you want to have a peep around there, you're welcome to come along tomorrow morning. Oh wow, I mean, if it isn't an issue? Not at all. I could use the company, not much to do on the job, and the boss says if he catches me reading magazines at the wheel again, he'll fire me. Belle's phone buzzed. She took a look at it and sighed. Read the news at the wheel. <laughs> uh, speaking of the great dictator, I gotta get going. Apparently the sheep have escaped from Daffodil Lane. Probably that kid opening the gate because it looked sad being closed again. She shook her head and downed the rest of her drink. I suspected I knew who she was talking about. Oh yeah. Oh no. I better stick around. I still have some stuff to do in town. Well, feel free to shoot me a message tomorrow morning if you're up for a really dull adventure. She chuckled and added her number to my phone. Wow, everyone really wants to hang out with me. If this were a dating game, I'd assume they all wanted to get in my pants. Fortunately, I keep my life very PG. Thank you. I wasn't sure how much I believed that given recent events, but the slight hope nothing involving Nikita and her stupid play would escalate beyond comic mischief and some rude language was reassuring. I don't play enough video games to get that joke, but ha 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 ha, sure. I hadn't meant to say that out loud. Anyway, I better get going. See you around, Trix. Wait, whenever we see, whenever someone meets Trixie, they say, hey, how's Trix? Ugh. She strolled off as calm as ever. I finished my drink and sat around for a while. Glad today had been full of distractions. I still wasn't ready to think about yesterday's event. Wait, who runs this place? I don't know. Eventually, I knew it was time to head to Heidi, so I didn't want to be late. She apparently had a taser. <laughs> yeah, I've got a taser. I'll tease ya. <laughs> don't get too close, I'll tease ya. <laughs> Or too far. Or too far. <laughs> I have to admit, I was slacking on my way to Heidi's shop. Drinking a pint of cola right before walking downtown wasn't a great decision on my part. Sorry I'm late, I'm here now. Please don't tase me. Yeah, I'm gonna tase ya. Yeah. Ah, Trixie, I was about to call you. Good, thank you for coming. I was worried you might be a deal breaker. Wouldn't want that now, would we? And then I would have had to tase you. I don't think that was a joke. Why do you have a taser anyway? Is that even legal? Probably. It's for self-defense, right? And good company on lonely nights. Okay, enough fucking around. We have a lot of work to do. She bundled me into her office. It was pretty small and completely cluttered with cardboard boxes. Okay, Trixie, you're going to help me with my side business spring cleaning. We're gonna go through these boxes and sort the junk into these two much bigger boxes. This is the stuff to be burned box! She kicked a generic wooden crate soaked in petrol. I chose not to question her health and safety practices and just tried to avoid breathing too much. And this is the stuff that might actually be worth money box. She tapped a sturdy metal safe. Okay, so what kind of stuff are we sorting through? Like extra stock or what? Uh, just like old antiques and books. Nothing too important. Let's just go on with it, okay? I want to close on time. <laughs> she dropped a cardboard box full of junk onto the desk in front of me. I started rooting around in it and found it was full of trash. Mostly dusty books falling apart at the seams and broken old antiques. But the more I look, the more it became clear that some of this stuff might actually be valuable. I pulled a golden bracelet out of the box and blew the dust off it. Engraved onto it was a strange fish-like face with a single opal eye that seemed to stare at me. Jeez, how much money do you make selling this stuff? Heck, where do you even get this stuff from in the first place? This looks expensive. <sighs> Heidi shot me an annoyed look. Don't question it. So a lot and illegally. Got it. <clears throat> I chuckled to myself. Heidi seemed unamused. I carefully put the bracelet into the safe. As I sorted through the box, it became pretty clear there was a theme to mm. Heidi's stuff. It was all in some way arcane. Old magic books, spooky scrolls, and even what seemed to be occult apparel like the bracelet I found earlier. Hmm. Heidi, do you believe in any of this stuff? Monsters and magic, I mean. She looked at me for a moment, somewhat puzzled. Of course not. I've never seen any monsters nor magic. But like, 
Don't you ever get tempted to try out any of the spells in these books? <clears throat> I opened up one of the thick, dusty tomes and skimmed through it looking for an example. Before I could read anything, Heidi slammed it shut on my fingers. Hey, ow! Okay, new rule. You don't look at anything for any longer than it takes to work out if it's valuable. Got it? I nodded. No, I don't believe in this stuff, but... Look, I'd like to keep it that way, okay? I met people who like this crap and it messes with their heads. This stuff is best left ignored, okay? Ignorance is bliss. She got back to work. I envied her lack of belief. I hoped with enough time, my brain could fully convince me that what I saw the night before was just a heat, dehydration, and spore-fueled hallucination. But I think, even then, I knew the truth. Even the buttons on the things are Pac-Man shaped. <laughs> Do you think any of those are skinned actual animals? Has oh, Heidi no. killed? Oh no! And this is really sus right here. Why has she yeah. got the feathers coming out of her snack machine? Heidi seemed to know that we were only inches from madness and intended to never test that distance. We sorted through the boxes for a while. Most of the stuff was pretty uninteresting, but... A few things caught my eye. A copper ambulant. Ambulant? Am <laughs> you want to try that again? Even. All right. A shard of ember with a strange ancient bug frozen inside of it. Some long distant ancestor to a modern bee, perhaps? A manuscript detailing a ritual to summon rain. And at one point, a Dungeons and Fungeons rule book with Heidi's name on it which was quickly grabbed off of me and stuffed into Heidi's desk drawer. <laughs> Dungeons and Fungeons. Dungeons and Fungeons. <laughs> I was getting pretty bored. Some of this stuff looked really interesting, but I knew Heidi would snap at me if I tried to look into any of it. Fortunately, there was a sound outside. Someone who had walked someone had walked into this shop. Heidi slinked over to the peephole in her office door suspiciously. Ah, it's a customer. Trixie, you take care of this stuff. I'll go deal with this schmuck. She walked into the shop, snapping at the customer for looking at something too strangely before the door closed behind her. I picked up one of the last items in the box, a small book titled Spiral Speeches of the Star Gods. Most of it seemed to be missing, but there were a few pages that seemed interesting. Oh, we're definitely Read reading it. it. I decided to use this chance and flick through the remnants of the book. Where lies the strangling fruit that came from the hand of sinner? I shall bring forth the seeds of the dead to share with the worms that gather in the darkness. And so, whoop, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> Spiral speeches of the star gods. Was, was, that the, was that the Annihilation one? Yeah, that's the Annihilation one. I keep forgetting that there's the Annihilation one and then there's the Control one. I haven't played Control. Neither have I. I really need to. That game looks good. We should. It sounds awesome. Uh, across the world, hundreds of tablets etched with identical spirals have been uncovered by archaeological digs. Thanks to bird mythology, these are popularly known as Star God tablets. Though there's been much speculation around these strange artifacts, the most obvious origin is clearly the humble sheep. Famously, every sheep has a near-identical spiral on their right front hoof, a strange evolutionary quirk. These exactly match the spirals seen in supposed Star God tablets. As the Star Gods are without a doubt entirely fictitious, the most obvious conclusion is that ancient societies would use sheep to produce this strange art. Most likely these etchings were painted when originally created, but any evidence of this has long since faded with time. Of course, some old bird legends would suggest that sheep created these themselves by pressing their feet into wet clay and allowing it to harden. This would make sense, if not for sheep showing no signs of the creativity needed to create such art, let alone the intelligence to produce clay tablets. It, I, I have furry worries. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like, oh, oh wait, so what? Uh, where's the line here? That said, everyone who has seen the footprints of a sheep can certainly agree that the process would be physically possible for them, if unlikely. This may merely be a misinterpretation of the claim. It is entirely possible sheep were specially trained to perform this task, or had their hoofs used as tools after death. Other bird legends describe the supposed star gods themselves creating these texts, hence their relevance to the tablets. 
though such stories are in the realm of fantasy. <laughs> the largest discovery of these relics were found in the ash islands of Oceania, and would have fallen from the sky after being thrown into the air by the Great Dark Age Cataclysm. This would make their original location the Siberian Wastes, the supposed home of the Star Gods. This is some pretty deep lore right here. Nevertheless, this theory is ultimately unf. 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 The pages ended there. The book had seen better days. Unfurled? <clears throat> Unfun? No, just unf. Unf. Okay. Unf. 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 <laughs> I thought of the strange spirals on the feet of sheep. How had that come to happen? It seemed too strange to be natural. This is going to be me being a dipshit, but do sheep have spirals on them? No. Okay, good. Thank you. Hold on then while I Google the phrase, do sheep have spirals? This is going to be in my Google history forever. Do sheep <laughs> have spirals? Nope. They don't. Okay, good. Thank you. There you go. I thought of the sheep in the field where I had come across the king in yellow and the clumps of dirty wool in the abandoned cottage. <clears throat> I shuddered. Sheep were weird, but harmless. Something far more sinister was at play, surely. It had been an interesting read. I threw it into the trash box. It wasn't long before Heidi was back. Hey, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Customers are a pain. <laughs> you finished. Nice one. She looked genuinely pleased with me. You know, you didn't do a bad job. She seemed to think for a moment. Want to go on burglaries with me? Trixie, how would you like to help me out again? For money, I mean. Your crowbar debt is paid. Oh, wow. I've never had a job before. Maybe? I wanted to help Heidi if just to satisfy my curiosity about a strange inventory. But I also wanted to hang out with Greg or Belle. I wasn't sure if there'd be time for that, too. Okay, so here's where we make one of... Here, here. So, on the game page, it says that we get to spend the week with one of three years. So this is going to be one of the, where the plat... Plath split... Pat... Plath spit... Save point? Yeah, let's drop a hot save. I don't know if we're going to do all the routes here, but this seems like a good place to drop a hot save. Save point. Ye However, I mean, if we do do other routes, we'll probably do other th because there's going to be other options we can take. And so eh. Let, I, I think we, we want to do Heidi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh. You all right over there? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that might be fun. I could use the money to buy more bat stuff. Bat stuff? Okay, sure. I don't need to know what you spend your money on. <laughs> Tell you what, come along tomorrow at 3 o'clock. You can help me out. Plenty of war work to do. She tapped one of the unsorted boxes. Cool. Okay, Heidi. Thank you. <laughs> right. Better start closing up. Thanks for your help. I'll see you, Trixie. I wished her a good evening and started the walk home to my bed. I could definitely use some sleep. I could definitely use some sheep. I was walking past Wilbur Hall on my way to bed when I noticed Nikita fumbling with the vending machine. She was trying to pull a bar of Toffee Miller out of its <laughs> slot, but it seemed to be stuck. She gave the machine a frustrated kick and the snack fell out. As she picked it up, she noticed me watching her. Oh, hello, Trixie. I'm just on my way back to my room. I have uh, have to finish reading uh, the... She seemed almost scared to say it. The, the king in ye Ye- Yellow, yes. The king in yellow. Nikita seemed skittish. Her usually tidy clothing was scruffy, her fur unbrushed, and her eyes <laughs> flitted around the hallway frantically. Her constant fidgeting made her look eager to finish talking to me and get back to her room. It was like she'd just been for a spin in a tumble dryer full of caffeine. Uh, are you okay, Nikita? You're kind of a mess. Have you been reading all day or something? <laughs> uh, yes, I have. All day, yes. Last night, too. Uh, preliminary research. <laughs> it's been a, an illuminating read this far. I need to read a little more, but... <sighs> Trixie. She grabbed me by the shoulders, pulling me close. I looked down at her scared eyes. I knew all too much about the reputation of the King in Yellow. I didn't want to believe it could have done this to Nikita, but... This wasn't right. Trixie, I need to make some notes and, um, I need to double check, read between the lines, but... 
no, never mind. We can discuss this later when, when I'm certain. She let go of me. I better get back to my room. There's... Yes. Good night, Trixie. She did a sort of shaky, fast walk away from me towards the accommodation block. Bye, Nikita. I was scared. Could this really have been the work of that play? It's so bad. <laughs> it's so poorly written, it just left me in shock. <laughs> I shook my head. This had to be sleep deprivation. She'd barely slept in weeks with her campaign planning and coursework, and yet I could remember how the book had drawn me to it when I held it. I'd wanted to pull the golden ribbon and read it. It began, something about a sweet fish river running through her beloved hometown. You're not allowed to make that reference. We haven't even finished that game yet. I am allowed to make a We've reference to it. literally not even gotten through the first part of it. You can't... Well, then we'll just have to play the rest of it. <laughs> Regardless of its oh. contents, the rumors around that accursed play were more than enough to make it maddening to behold. I didn't like Nikita, but I was genuinely worried about her health. I figured I'd let her finish reading and get some sleep. Then I could always make sure she was okay in the morning. Cereal's cleaned. Yeah, we cleaned it this morning. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I, eventually <laughs> I eventually got back to my room and collapsed onto my bed. It had been a busy day, but I couldn't sleep because of the incessant ooing. I am in love with this poster. This poster is... Like, my favorite thing. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. You, should, you should ask the developer if you can acquire <laughs> one. <laughs> Hello, yes, I would like one Ooh. poster. I was planning to muck about on my laptop until I got tired enough to sleep, but it was on my desk and I couldn't be bothered to get back out of bed. <gasps> Keeps her tissues right by the, uh, right by the computer. I know what you get up to, Trixie. <laughs> and the lotion and the in the drawer. Uh, mm, Trixie! I remembered the book about ghosts I'd gotten hold of a few weeks back. It was probably still on the floor next to my bed. I remembered it being pretty tacky. Peering over the edge, I could see it was. After my sighting in the basement, I thought it might be relevant. If I was going to stay awake a little longer, I thought I may as well use my time productively. Before I could reach for the book, my phone buzzed. Tabby had sent me a message. That was unexpected. I don't speak to Tabby often, which is sad because I kind of wish we were friends, but I don't think she really notices me. I used to think she was kind of weird, but after the last week, I have to admit I'm taking her more seriously. I wasn't sure if I could handle a conversation mm -hmm. with her right then, but I did think it would be kind of nice to talk to someone. Let's talk. Let's talk? Yeah. <clears throat> Hey, Trixie, one of my Psyker crystals, the green spiral aligned one, went missing. I was wondering if you'd seen it anywhere. Hey, you fucking Chunibyo, I haven't <laughs> seen it. When did it go missing? No worries. Someone today, I think. Sorry about that, mouse troubles. I left it plugging in charge all day, but the USB wasn't plugged in. <laughs> so. That'll happen. No worries. Someone today, I think. Oh no, I'll keep an eye out for it. Hey, Tabby, do you know the King in Yellow? Sorry, not to bug you, just wondering if you're not busy. Oh yes, the infamous haunted play. I know it, can't say I've read it though. Why, are you researching it or something? I heard it's generally a bad idea. Not to discourage you, but it'll be a great study for next year. Ha 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 ha, ha no, 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 I'm not gonna read it. I'm pretty sure it doesn't even exist anymore. I was just wondering if you knew much about it. You're a good student. <laughs> well, I have to be if I want to be student union president next year, right? I read a few books on, the, on it at the uni library. Maybe we could get them out? The notes of the Grand Inquisitor of Villainhelm were really good for obvious reasons. Anyway, gotta get some sleep. Going to Wolf Fest South tomorrow in town. Gonna be super hot in my costume. Lol. She's a wool suitor. Not in that way, you cheeky rat. Maybe you should come to WolCon with me sometime when. Some when. Dee Dee, if you're into that. Maybe. I'll let you get Oh, it's Tabitha. Oh, no. Thanks, Tabby. Something. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. 
But consider. Ooh. I also like that this neatly resolves the do first suitors exist in your furry setting and the do regular animals still exist in your furry setting with yes, it's only she. Meh. <laughs> 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 Tabby's Wait, where's the milk come from then? Bell, obviously. Crouch, do you make that milk? <laughs> <laughs> Tabby is nice, but I don't really know if she likes me or not. <clears throat> I wasn't super keen on the idea of going to WoolCon. Dressing as a sheep and whiffing, or whatever they do at those cons, didn't sound super appealing. <laughs> Regardless, it was time to sleep. Ooh. I had a surprisingly pleasant, if somewhat strange, dream. I was a clerk marrying Nikita to a giant toffee millet bar. And then I married the entire cast of Cyber Drac Cool Yes from Mars. Parsnip was there, jumping up and down, throwing confetti. Let's not go into it. Regardless, it was a welcome break from the horrid dreams I'd had the night before. I woke up feeling a lot better. Thanks again to all of our wonderful patrons this month. Thank you. Um, you picked a good one. You, you picked a, a really good one. <laughs> you always do. Somehow. You always do, and we always appreciate it. Um, if you're not already, you can uh, consider supporting us on Patreon.com, and you'll get to uh, vote on whose games we play every month. Um, and you also get access to Patreon-exclusive episodes, including uh, you get to see the Patreon potpourris, the month they come out rather than waiting a month for them to show up on the main channel. And you get the Patreon exclusive Ace Attorney playthrough, of which episode two will be going up next month since we just hit that tier. And that's pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. And we want to give a quick uh, personal shout out to all of our uh, patrons on the uh, ja I'm Jacked In tier. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, very special thanks to Alyssa Clark, uh, Brian Bales, Chris, 1024, Mercury, Alice Damore, The Fighting Doll, Snow Flurry, and Reyna. Every single one of you are freaking incredible. Yeah. And the fact that you uh, support us and lets us do stuff like this every month, and that means the fucking world to us. Yeah. So thank you all. Smash, smash, smash that like, comment and subscribe, comment and subscribe.